All right, all right. It is lab number five. Let's get into it. Today we're going to talk about human taxonomy, how to classify a human, and we'll talk about race. And then we're going to tear apart the concept of race because there is no such thing as human biological races. Where do we get the idea of race then? This guy Linnaeus, one of the biggest a-holes of all time, who came up with the notion of the great chain of being that God created all creatures and then rank them in accordance with the great chain of being. God at the top, the most perfect, angels slightly less perfect, and then just below the angels, mankind, perched above all the other beasts, made to hold dominion all of the over the other animals, and then monkeys were better than worms and worms were better than bacteria, whatever. This was a ladder that this guy codified and Scholars and naturalists use this for a couple of hundred years. This is how they thought life was organized, based on creation and the great chain of being. But what Linnaeus did next was really pernicious, and this is why I think he's an a-hole, because he took this great chain of being and then he ranked different kinds of people. Of course, he's European, so he put himself closest to God, made in God's image. Asians were not quite as human. Native Americans? savages, subhumans, and Africans were just some other beast to be domesticated, just one rung above the animals. And so what this did for the Europeans was give them permission to do bad things. This justified the colonial agenda of the 17th, 18th, 19th centuries. The Native Americans were slaughtered. This justified genocide. And because Africans were not really people, they could be domesticated. This justified things like slavery horrible system and it's total nonsense yet this was very popular in america because it has uh, a history and a heritage in justifying all of these economic and social agendas but there's a law a rule called the rule of hypo descent that determines your race in america and it goes back to slave times it is not based on your biology it is based on one drop of so-called inferior blood for example, if you had one black ancestor, you would be black. The rule of hypo descent, one drop of inferior blood completely lowers your rank. And it's not based on how you look. It's just based on whether or not you would have been free or a slave back in the old days. Here's an example. Holly Berry, who is lighter than me and lighter than most of you, I would imagine. Yet in the great chain of being, we take her mixture, European mother, African father, and we choose the lowest ranking one. She moves down the ladder. In America, you take the lowest possible rank, not based on your skin tone. It's based on who your parents were, whoever was the lowest rank. Here's El Tigre, Tiger Woods, total mutt. He's 25% European, 25% Asian, 25, you get the idea, 25% African American. But guess what? In America, he doesn't climb the ladder to freedom. He's not European. He's not, he's African because that is the lowest possible choice. Is this biologically accurate? Of course not. It's not based on his skin tone. It's not based on anything. It's based on his ancestry. It's a social concept. And if you're mixed, uh, even the, the higher ranking two groups, if you're European and Asian in America, you're just Asian. This makes absolutely no biological sense, but the great chain of being, let's, let's put Hispanics and substitute Native Americans here for Hispanics. If you're Hispanic and European, you're Hispanic. If you're Hispanic and African-American, like uh, the singer Miguel, you're just straight up black. Biologically, this makes no sense. For some reason, we're still using this old slave system in America, and I think it needs to go. We're still using this horribly racist system, things to justify colonial policies and slavery, genocide, and it's not based on your skin color. The rule of hypo descent, I'm gonna ask you this, how are Americans classified? It's not based on their hair, their nose, their blood type, nothing. It's based on their ancestors, nothing to do with biology. Let me just kind of show you what I'm talking about because I'm going to show you some pictures of people and I want you to just guess what race they are. If biological race is a real thing, then you should never get it wrong. So here we go. What race? 
if you heard her speaking, maybe you'd get a little more clue if she was wearing certain types. Well, you probably got this wrong. She's from Guyana. What race are people from Guyana? Guyanese. How about homegirl? Love those freckles. What about her? What race? Did you guess Maori? The indigenous tribal people from New Zealand? Probably not. What about homegirl? What race is she? She's got hair, she got eye. Egyptian? Did you guess that? Bet you didn't, because she could be from anywhere. She could be from all over the place. She could be Southern Italy, she could be South American, she could be Puerto Rican, she could be, you get the idea. Look at, look at this lady. Cool looking lady. She's um, the original humans. This is a woman from the Kung tribe. They have reddish skin, yellowish skin, brownish skin, the folded eyelid, the epicanthic fold. And uh, this is kind of like what we all used to look like. We've diversified, but this woman has every human trait. Let's move on. Dark skin, can't see what's going on with the hair, got some nose piercings, so Sri Lanka, South Asia. Okay, but I thought only black people have dark skin. Apparently Asians do too. Okay, in fact, anybody that lives near the equator had better have dark skin. We'll talk about that later. What about this guy? Can't see, is he wearing a sombrero? Nope, he's wearing a turban. North African. Do all Africans look alike? Of course not. People closer to the equator are darker. This guy's a little bit lighter, but he's not as light as somebody from, like, Sweden. What about homegirl? Gangbanger, right? Nope. Another indigenous Maori. What race are the Maori, by the way? You got nothing, because in America, we just found out about them 10 minutes ago, and they weren't taken here as slaves. The slave categories are basically the racial types in America that we have. Ah, uh, look at the eye shape. That's going to tell you what race someone is, right? Eye shape, South American. See, that eye shape is not an Asian eye shape. It's actually a human eye shape. This is the Yanomamo tribe. That guy I just showed you is also from the same tribe. Notice the epicanthic fold, the folded eyelid. That is actually a human trait. Most populations have that characteristic. It originated in Africa, and you can see the epicanthic fold, that folded eyelid, is the original shape, like that woman I showed you from the Kung tribe just now. And the only African you can name, Nelson Mandela, also had the epicanthic fold. So it is not an Asian characteristic. You can't use eye shape to classify someone's race, just like you can't use skin color. Let me ask you this. Has anybody ever asked you, what are you? What race are you? If race was a real biological thing, nobody would have to ask you. Like nobody asks a zebra, what are you, bro? Everybody knows because there are discrete characteristics that zebras have that make them different from horses. But has anybody ever called you by the wrong race? If somebody has to ask you, or if somebody accuses you of being, how is it a real thing if people get it wrong? People get it wrong because there is no trait that you can use to divide people into racial groups. You can't use skin, you can't use hair, you can't use blood, you can't. I'm gonna show you some of this stuff. For example, skin color. In America, we tend to think your skin color determines your race. No. Your skin color tells me how far your ancestors used to live from the equator. This dude, his ancestors live on the equator, Australia. You better be brown because brown skin is built in SPF 30. If you're darker than this guy, it's like SPF 100. But this guy has a lot of pigment so he doesn't get skin cancer. This guy is a little bit lighter. As you move away from the equator, people get even lighter still. Skin color has nothing to do with your race. It has to do with the distance from the equator that your ancestors live because radiation's intense on the equator and you better be brown. So take a look, what color would you expect people to be right on the equator? Yep, built-in sunscreen, SPF 50. If you move to North Africa, we saw the guy a minute ago was a little bit lighter, so is this guy, but he's still intermediate, in between skin color. Here's somebody from Southern Asia. I thought Asians are yellow. Nope, Asians come in brown if they live closer to the equator. What about Australia? Dark brown, just like any African. What race are Australians? 
In America, we skip over that. We don't bother. How about India? By the way, the brown on the map shows us how much radiation hits that part of the world. It's a lot. That's why this guy has a lot of pigment, as dark as any other human being on the planet. But because this guy's from India, the British give this guy the racial category of white. Does that make sense? This guy is white? No, because race is not a biological thing. It is a cultural thing. It's a socio-political colonial thing. Let's go to Central Asia. This is Nepal. They got a little bit of radiation there. Yup, and a little bit of pigment. Asians are not yellow people. Nobody looks like the Simpsons. People here are kind of like a light brown. Ooh, Southern Europe. What color are people? All white people, right? This should be like people in... Nope, kind of dark because this guy lives closer to the equator than somebody does in Ireland or Iceland or Sweden. So white people are not white. People are just different color browns and tans. How come some people are lighter? Well, as you move away from the equator, you don't have to worry about dying of skin cancer. You have to worry about not getting enough sun because up in Sweden, there is no sunlight, so you can't make any vitamin D. And if you're dark, you really can't make any vitamin D. So what happened, as people moved out of Africa and moved and spread around the world, they got lighter over many generations. Because if you're light-skinned, then you can produce vitamin D even if there's no sunlight. From just a tiny little bit of sunlight, you can get all the vitamin D you need. And if you don't get vitamin D, you die. What about your nose? Can we use your nose to determine your race? Negative. Skin color and nose shape has nothing to do with one another. This is the nose you want to have if it's hot and humid. But that is a terrible nose in the dry desert, which is why people with the same color skin have narrow noses in the desert because that narrow nose humidifies dry air. And when you breathe in, when you're sleeping, you're breathing, you're not drying out your lungs. The mucosa and the narrow nose brings a little bit of humidity to the inspired air and it's much healthier. So we'll talk about that if you're taking my class. Uh, we spend a little bit more time on that. But suffice to say, your nose has nothing to do with your race. Anywhere it's hot and humid, we find that flat, broad nose. That's the best nose shape for any place that's hot and humid. The narrow nose is better where it's dry. So in colder environments or dry deserts, you find a narrow nose. Guess what? Race is not a biological thing at all. You have no racial category for this little girl. She's just a little girl. She comes from the Solomon Islands. So race is a social concept because there's no, no category for this little girl with the epicanthic fold, the curly blonde hair, the wide broad nose. It's just, she looks like she's supposed to for the part of the world she lives in. The last thing I want to talk about is just the racial types that we use in America. The racial types are racist. And if you use them, you're unconsciously ranking people because they're not just names, they're not just neutral. They're ranked in order from best to worst. And if you're using these racial cate categories, somebody, calling somebody white or black, then you're basically using the great chain of being because that's what these things were invented to do, to segregate people and to basically establish the superiority of Europeans to hold dominion over all the other types of people. So guess what? If you use racial categories, you're a racist and you should probably stop using them because you might reify this and make this real when it is total BS. Capiche? All right, I got a few exercises for you guys to do. Um, make sure you do the media assignment before you do the quiz because you'll need to have that handy when you do your quiz. Okay. Good luck. Love you.